Good afternoon, and welcome to the on-record portion of the Rockbridge Report. I'm Whit Robertson. Joining me today is Dr. Rebecca Gates of the Rockbridge County, I mean the Buena Vista County School System. Rebecca, thank you for coming today. My pleasure. How did you get involved with the Buena Vista School System, and um, has your time as a superintendent, what have you done, and what have your goals been in, in being a part of this school system? Sure, it's been very exciting because this is my first superintendency. I've been there for five years, and this is my 35th year in education. So one of the things we've been working really hard on is to transition a community that in the past you graduated from high school and you went and worked in the plants. But unfortunately now a lot of those plants have closed down, and so now we're trying to switch the whole approach to post-secondary education. And I'm really pleased to say, as I glance down here, that last year, 83% of our senior class went to post-secondary education. And that's a huge increase from the previous years. Yes, ma'am. And what specific programs have you put in place in your time to help improve boards or teaching, um, to help improve graduation rates and things like, along that nature? I'm glad you brought up graduation rate because ours is 89% for on-time graduation, which is above the state average. We're the only school system on this side of the mountain that was able to access a grant to bring in AP classes. They didn't have any advanced placement classes when I first arrived there. And I just happened to know the person who's managing the huge grant from the Exxon Corporation, and so we were able to make that happen. Dual enrollment classes, we have a large number of students that take dual enrollment. So technically, if a student signed up for as many dual enrollment classes as they could with the AP, you could have an associate's degree before you leave Perry McClure High School. Yes, ma'am. And with that, with the ability to take AP courses, how has that affected the students going to college afterwards and how the, the rate at which they graduate and move on to higher education? I would say that probably the largest advantage is once they get in college, the feedback that I've had is that they felt much more prepared for college classes than they had in the past. And one student last year, one of our best students, said to me, you know what, this is the first time I've had to think. So that shows me that we are challenging our students. The other thing is the career in um, technical education. Most people think of that as vocational, the way it used to be a long time ago. But my dream is for every student to graduate with an industry certification test and also a regular or advanced high school diploma. Last year we gave 162 industry certification tests. And it's for advanced manufacturing, pre-engineering to prepare students. Because I don't know if you're aware or not, there was an engineering position in Buena Vista last year and they couldn't find anybody in Rockbridge County who was qualified for that job, which paid very well. Yes, ma'am. Um, what is the most needed adjustment, would you say, right now to the school system, the schools themselves? Um, what, what's, the, what's next on the, on the ballot for the school system? Really trying to have more technology integrated instruction. The state provides a large sum of money, actually, every year for you to buy technology. For the last two years, we've spent that money on teacher tools, laptops, uh, projectors, screens, so on, so on. But now next year, I want to spend that money to get tools into the students' hands. So our idea was if we had teachers ready to use technology, we know the students are ready, that they would go together. But I'm still, we have a long ways to go before we actually have technology um, guiding the instruction. Yes, ma'am. Um, and along those lines, what, what does a young person today, a student today, need to learn in school that, say, their parents didn't have to? How to work very effectively on a team, project-based learning that we talked a little bit about before, 21st century learning, being able to have respect for cultures because most of them will be on global work teams down the road. And one thing you'll find in Buena Vista, there's not a lot of diversity. So I'm trying to make sure that students have respect for all cultures and all opportunities that they're exposed to. So, are there any specific programs um, in place to sort of help the advancement of learning to use newer technology and to put the tools in their hands in the future to um, be very equipped with technology? Mm -hmm. Well, we have computer labs, of course, in each of our schools, and all of our testing is done online now, so everybody's involved in that. 
In our career in technical ed, we have AutoCAD and advanced manufacturing with the robotics, which is part of the technology. And we have several teachers who are very interested in technology. We just purchased iPads and Kindle readers for a few of our elementary classes. So. And the students learn to use both of those and, and use them together? Yes. And the students are excited. I mean, as you well know, your generation too, you hand technology to you all and you know exactly what to do about it. It's trying to get people up to speed, in particular my age. Our administrative team wanted iPads, so we bought them for the whole team. The first weekend they had them, they came back Monday. They'd been on it all weekend. I hadn't opened mine out of the box yet, if that gives you an idea of how excited they were about getting an iPad. Yes, ma'am. Do you think um, using those tools and getting to them at a younger age, at an elementary school age, is going to help by the time they get to high school, they'll be fully more immersed in technology and want to be a part of it a lot more? Yes. They want to get their hands on it now. It's just a matter of having the teachers be comfortable with their students depending on technology. That's where the gap is that we have a ways to go with training, staff development, and I'm hoping that the students will kind of push the teachers along a little bit faster. And what, what kind of training, do you have training programs in place for the teachers to help when you get new technology? Yes. Yes, there's several days that are set aside, full day staff developments, and we always have a lot of technology sessions. The teachers are actually requesting online staff development so that they can do it at their convenience as compared to everybody's going to go up to the high school for this day for these hours, these set times. So eventually I hope that we can have online staff development. And um, as, as superintendent, you have your hand in, a, in every school and a lot of uh, the community and your job really involves taking care of a lot of people's children in the community. How, how, does that, how does that feel to you and what do you think about that? I love it. It's great. I feel like I'm having an impact on over a thousand students, which is what my dream was. As far as being involved in the community, I meet with parents, I'm on several boards in the area. I was mentioning to you I'm on the hospital board because I think it's important for me to step out of education and be able to look at the whole picture. I just love making a difference in students' lives and I believe I'm doing that. How has uh, your experience on the hospital board and boards outside improved your um, ability to work back inside of the education system? Well, when I go to those meetings and the language and the acronyms are totally different from what I've heard, it shows me that when we're communicating with parents to make sure that we step out of our educator language and make sure that we're explaining the terms that we throw around, that we all understand that other people don't. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, and with the budget uh, proposed on uh -huh. the table right now, um, one of the top concerns of the school system and wishes is um, proposing a, some sort of raise for the teachers. And um, I was reading that it was projected to possibly come out of supplemental, comp supplemental compensation. Mm -hmm. um, could you explain that a little bit and how, and how feasible you think it might be to give these teachers a raise? Sure. That was our priority that we set this summer, the school board and I, when we met at a retreat for the compensation, because our teachers and all the staff have not had an increase for the last three years. I think it's important not only for the teachers to get an increase, but if they're going to get any increase at all, everybody needs to get an increase because your support staff, your bus drivers, your cafeteria, you know, they're just as important as your instructional. So we have five options on the table. Three have to do, two are percentage increases, the other is a step increase, but if we do any of those, we'll have to sustain them next year. So we're also considering another bonus, which we did early in the year with jobs recovery money which is a one-time check that they were given. Yes, ma'am. Um, Virginia, when Tim Kaine was uh, governor, they, Virginia offered an energy efficiency bill to the school systems, yes. and Governor McDonald has been um, overseeing it now, and we are not receiving the same money. Um, how does that affect uh, the Buena Vista school system, and sort of what projects do, we, do they need that money for? Well, you've probably heard about our middle school project, which was an energy efficiency project. Um, that school, the part of the building that I'm in was built in the 1920s. We have a 1954 boiler running that school for the heating system. So it's either very warm or else it's cold. 
So we went through a whole plan with Schneider Electric on how we were going to do energy efficiency, which was going to save us $30,000 a year, and that would have made the bond payment. We put in the application, Governor Kane selected us, but then we found out that we had to do a bond referendum because of the way the city charter is written in Buena Vista. So we had a bond referendum. Everybody said it'll never pass, but guess what? It passed. Now we're waiting for Governor McDonald to come out with his next list of schools to use the money that we were selected for back with Governor Kane before we did the bond referendum. That list is supposed to come out tomorrow, but the key is going to be, even if we're on the list, can we be in what's called the Virginia Public School Authority bond pool, where the state handles all the bond sales? We might not be able to be in that pool because of the financial situation in Buena Vista with the golf course. You've probably heard about that. Yeah. I mean, last year the city had to make a decision, fund education or not make the golf course payment, and they chose to fund education. But because they didn't make the golf course payment and they defaulted on that loan, it's having other repercussions for the bond pools, unfortunately. So receiving this money really is an important aspect to the school system in Buena Vista. And yes. And how, how could it enhance the, the student's education other than just heating? Lighting is a big part of it. And there's also a small solar project that's part of it, too, where we would teach kids about solar energy. And again, they're interested in learning that, like the technology. Some solar panels that would be uh, collect energy for the outdoor lighting. Yes, After we get those projects done, we need to move to our elementary school, Enderly Elementary, three levels. When you talk about security in a school, there's three levels. Anybody could walk up to any one of those rooms. So we're trying to get a handle on handicap accessibility in that building and also, again, energy efficiency. Thank you for joining us. I'm Whit, Ro I'm Whit Robertson for today's on-record portion of the Rockbridge Report. Thank you.